Morena, I'm Glenn uh, Glenil, your MC for today. Welcome to the New Zealand Food Safety Science and Research Centre's annual symposium. Great to have you here, particularly at this time of the year when we celebrate Matariki. Everybody enjoyed Friday off, I hope. Uh, Manawatia a Matariki, uh, a time to for us to all reflect on the past year, to celebrate being together, and to look forward to the future. What a great thread to wave into today's program. Do you like that, Kim? Yeah, let's go with that. So, first up. Spain one, Spain one. Spain one. Fantastic. Don't know if anybody had the soccer recorded for tonight, but uh, you don't need to watch it now. Spoiler alert. It's a bit late for a spoiler alert. Anyway, onwards. So, Matariki, uh, it's about the stars. It's about uh, navigation, and it's about weather, it's about feasting uh, on food, on kai, and it's about celebrating. So what a thread to weave through today's program. That was the challenge issued to me after last year, and yes, I am back after last year uh, by some miracle set of circumstances. But my first job today is to introduce Mr. Rauru Kirikiri. Now, Ro is uh, about to perform a karakia for us today. Uh, he's been involved with the, the centre. I'm going to call it the centre for the rest of the day. Is that okay, Libby? Okay, yes. Yes, great. In line with Kim, that's good. Um, and since its establishment, so Ro is a founding member of Titira Fakamana, the centre's Māori reference group. Thank you, Ro. Aka tira te nā tātou. <coughs> te nā tātou e ki ake nei te kōrero mā nawatia a matariki. <coughs> ko tāku i tēnei wā i te huaki i te tātou hui mai tētahi karaki o potu nei mō tātou. Nā reira uh, huri no, huri no to tātou whare i tēnā tātou katoa. Ken wei tātou. <coughs> Let us pray. <coughs> Toi tu te whenua, toi tu te rangi, whatu ngarongaro te tangata. <coughs> Mana o tia, a matariki. <coughs> ko tupu anuku, ko tupu arangi, ko waitā, ko waiti, ko te hiwa o te rangi. <coughs> ka tipu, ka kai, ka ora. <coughs> ka huri ki a... <coughs> Pohutu kawa, ka rere atu ngā whakāro ki a rātau, rātau ko wehe atu ki te pō. <coughs> nā reira, horu, haere atu, te hunga wairua ki tu o pārai. Haere hoki atu, <coughs> tūkuna atu ki tua, ko raina ki tai. <coughs> nā reira, <coughs> ka tiro ake ki te take, Kei mui a tātou i tēnei wā. Hei huritanga mo te wairua. Hei tūnga ake mo te hine ngaro. Wai hoti o ake rātou ko mene atu ki te pō o ki mai ki a tātou i tēnei wā e hora nei, e hui nei i raro te karanga. Nā reira, tika nātu te wairua tapu. Uhia mai ki runga ki tēne o ngā hui. Kia pā mara makatoa wa tātou kōrero. Kia tukuna atu ki runga rawa tohanaen ki runga i te whenua. Nā reira huri noa, huri noa, tēnā tātou, tēnā tātou, tēnā tātou katoa. As Glenn's already said, a new year, a new season, hail Matariki. <laughs> Matariki is as much about food as it is about those who have gone be before us, and which is what I said in my short prayer beforehand. Uh, those stars that I referred to, Tupuanuk, Tupuarangi, Waiti, Waita, are all about food, and that's what we're here for all about food. But for some, perhaps 
almost as important or mo maybe even more important for some, Pohutukawa is about those who have departed. And we must remember them uh, as we go through today's uh, proceedings. So on that note, again, huri no to tātou whare, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia ora tātou katoa. Tātou, tātou e, tūtira mai ngā iwi. Tātou, tātou e, whai ātou. E ngā iwi, kia tapatahi, kia kotahira, tātou, tātou e. Anō, again! Tū tēra mai ngā iwi, tātou, tātou e. Tū tēra mai ngā iwi, tātou, tātou e. Whai a te maramatanga me te aroha e ngā iwi Kia tapatahi, kia kotahira, tātou, tātou e Tātou, tātou e Hia uehi Thank you, Doe. Uh, it's always good to start the day in that fashion. So some housekeeping, first of all. So uh, first of all, the emergency exits left and right. If you hear the alarm sound, then uh, the continuous sound of the alarm, uh, then, then panic. Uh, but after you finish panicking, leave by the nearest safe exit. If there's an earthquake, which is unlikely here in Hamilton, they thought that was the case in Christchurch prior to September 4, 2010. Uh, but if there is an earthquake, then drop, cover, hold, uh, take a selfie, post that to Facebook. It'll be the last thing you ever do in terms of Facebook. Um, hopefully, if you are posting to LinkedIn, just remember uh, to say how humbled and privileged you are to be doing so. If you discover a fire, uh, activate the fire alarm signal, break glass, operate switch, call reception. Uh, the emergency exit gathering is out through uh, the doors to the back right. Um, there's a car park and there's willow trees uh, about 200 metres away, which is where you want to go, uh, where you should go if you want to smoke a cigarette today as well. Any smokers in the room? It's okay. All right. Only one. Used to be one. Um, it's fantastic fun. Um, just to rattle through the sponsors, very grateful for those who support uh, these types of events, and particularly this one. Uh, through the uh, donation of some cold hard cash money and those uh, sponsors very grateful for and will look forward to supporting wherever possible a sure quality the University of Otago, uh, Lincoln University and Fonterra, thank you team. Uh, next job is for me to introduce uh, Giselle, Professor Giselle Burns is the Provost at Massey University. Te kuninga ki pūre uroa. Uh, where she is responsible for, for providing strategic leadership, leadership uh, to supporting learning and teaching, academic innovation and quality assurance in addition to advancing research and research commercialisation across the university. A former Fulbright scholar, Giselle is an internationally recognised historian and her major research contributions have centred on the dynamics and politics of settler indigenous histories, public histories and the politics of national history writing. Welcome Giselle Mass from Massey University, the host of the Centre. Uh, kia ora Glenn, uh, uh, tēnā koe rau uh, for your um, mihi and welcome. Um, nā mihi nui, uh, ki a koe. Um, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa, uh, ko Giselle Burns taka wingoa. Uh, my name is Giselle Burns, and as Glenn has said, I'm the Provost at Te Kuninga Ki Pūrihurua, Massey University, and I'm here today, and delighted to be so, to represent the host of the New Zealand Food Safety Science Research Centre. I'm especially honoured to be here today at a significant uh, time of change, 
and the way that we think about, plan for and mitigate risks in food safety. Te Kuninga Ki Purihuru of Massey University regards food science and food safety science and research as central to its mission and to our commitment to Aotearoa New Zealand. We continue to teach uh, food science, uh, food technology, food safety, and to sponsor a range of programs in those areas in terms of research, and will continue to do so. Established uh, almost a century ago, 1927 in fact, as an agricultural college to support this country's essential food and fibre exports and industries, Te Kuninga Ki Purihurua, Massey, has never lost sight of our commitment to supporting New Zealand's food, agriculture, land and animal-based sectors. Over time, of course, the university has developed a suite of diverse research and teaching strengths to the point where many of our subjects in applied sciences, arts, design and social sciences now feature amongst the best in the world and we consistently rank in the top 3% of research intensive universities globally. Um, I have to say that um, I'm here representing my university today. And notwithstanding this breadth of expertise, which is my point, we still prioritise our teaching and research in food science and in food related areas. It is the thread that binds our many disciplines together. My job this morning is also to welcome you to the symposium and to introduce the Minister for Food Safety, the Honourable Andrew Hoggart, who will formally open our meeting today. But first, I, I want to thank you all for coming today uh, to hear about new and cutting edge issues in food safety research and food safety science, co to connect with friends and colleagues, to learn something new, I hope, and to reflect again on the importance of food safety science and research. I want to acknowledge a few people as well. Uh, I want to acknowledge the local university here in Kirikiriroa, Hamilton, which is al also my alma mater, uh, Te Whariwananga o Waikato, or the University of Waikato. And I understand that uh, Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research Gary Wilson will uh, join us later today. I also acknowledge the many industry partners we have here, uh, MPI and MBIE, uh, colleagues for their support, continuing support, the representatives of the various research organisations that we have in the room, uh, the centre's stellar leadership team, the board members, and especially Dr Anne Aston, who has travelled from Australia to be with us here today. Welcome, Anne. I know it's still relatively early in the morning for you. The vision for the New Zealand Food Safety Science and Research Centre is that Aotearoa New Zealand will be recognised as a world leader in producing and in delivering safe food. The centre also operates, as many of you will know, as a highly distinctive collaborative model where government, industry and research come together to support a best teams approach to food safety research. And this is proving to be a highly successful model. Accordingly, the centre's values are collaboration, guardianship, care, and inclusivity. And I'm sure that you'll see these values demonstrated here today. Last month, indeed, the Minister of Agriculture, uh, the Honourable Todd McClay, and MPI published New Zealand's Situation and Outlook for Primary Industry. And this report that many of you will have read, I'm sure, forecasts that food and fibre revenue is expected to reach more than 54 billion in the next uh, year. Uh, to uh, the next tw 12 months. And New Zealand's food and fibre sector is responsible for over 80% of New Zealand's goods exports, playing a vital role in driving our collective wellbeing and economic success. There's nothing more important than safe food. It sustains us, it not only keeps us healthy, but it also supports the financial wellbeing of our nation. It ensures that Aotearoa New Zealand maintains our reputation for great food and thereby keeps our export markets open <coughs> and it supports our GDP. Last week, as we've noted already, uh, was the beginning of Matariki, uh, Māori New Year and, and Aotearoa's New Year. Matariki honours the past and celebrates the future and that's what we'll be doing today. And at the close of today's symposium, 
you'll be hearing from the centre's director, Dr Libby Harrison, about the future of the centre. So it truly is a new beginning for us. And I'm truly delighted that Te Kuninga Ki Purihurua Massey University has a vital role to play in this new future. But before we move into the substance of the symposium, it is my pleasure to introduce the Honourable Andrew Hoggard, Minister for Food Safety and Minister for Biosecurity and Associate Minister for Agriculture and the Environment, who will formally open the fifth annual meeting of the New Zealand Food Safety Science and Research Centre. Minister Hoggard is a lifelong dairy farmer with a farm in Kiwitea in the Manawatu. He's also a proud Massey alumnus, so he's a neighbour of the university and part of our community. Minister Hoggard was president of the Federated Farmers of New Zealand from 2020 until 2023, when he was elected to parliament as an ACT uh, MP. Andrew's also very qualified in applied economics, so I think we need to ensure that we get our numbers right today. <laughs> Thank you, uh, and again, welcome. Uh, tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā tātou katoa. Greetings to you all, and I'll hand over to Minister Hoggard. Thank you, Giselle, for your warm welcome. Um, it's a pleasure to be here to celebrate all the science you're all doing, the research achievements, and all of your contributions to the New Zealand economy and our food export reputation around the world. Um, I am truly privileged to be Minister for Food Safety. I was talking to the board and some of the executive before, and it's obviously not a role that you want to take on if you're after political ego points. Um, my goal is that in three years' time, no one knows that I was the Minister of Food Safety because if people know you're the Minister of Food Safety, it's because something has gone very, very wrong. And um, yeah, it's not a job where you'll get lots of kudos for doing a good job because no one will know you've done a good job. And much like all of you, the hard work you all do on a daily basis, um, everyone sort of takes it for granted that food is safe, food is edible. I think it's fair to say, I uh, mentioned before I went to Massey, and uh, for those that were around Massey in the 90s, you can probably remember what it was like, um, and any of my flatmates, if you had have told them back then that I was going to be the Minister of Food Safety, they would have given you a rather incredulous look, um, probably similar to Joe Biden. Uh, <laughs> But jokes aside, uh, look, this is a special week to celebrate food science in Hamilton uh, with a symposium today, followed by the New Zealand Institute for Food Science and Technology Conference starting tomorrow. We all play a part in the food safety system with innovative food, science, food safety science capability across industry, academic institutions, government and research institutes. We ensure that New Zealand's food environment thrives the system could not thrive without the centre and its partners. As such, I am pleased to announce that the centre will continue to deliver the scientific evidence basis for the food safety regulatory system with funding now secured beyond December 2024. Um, New Zealand Food Safety, Massey University and industry members have committed for funding the centre to ensure continued collaboration and and connectivity, oops, I should have mentioned Joe Biden, uh, across the food safety research system. Uh, Director Libby Harrison will provide more details on this agreement later on today. I look forward to seeing what can be achieved through this continued partnership that will benefit the food safety system. Science and research not only supports New Zealand's food safety science and regulatory programs, but also co-develops tools and knowledge with industry. Your work ensures that food businesses have the greatest opportunity to meet regulatory requirements and thus reduce food safety and market access risk. I want to recognise the hard work and dedication of you all, particularly as you continue to deliver during difficult times brought by COVID-19, climate change, ongoing conflicts around the world and increased cost of living. These are all disruptions that impinge upon business and trade and also on maintaining food safety. 
Last year we had to work through the aftermath of extreme weather events in the North Island, um, particularly to industries like horticulture, which still have an ongoing impact over a year later. And it was interesting hearing before, um, just when meeting before, about the work that the Food Safety Science Centre actually did in terms of helping those horticultural um, industries get back into the market. We hope that Budget 2024 funding to reduce flood risks for communities will boost resilience against future extreme weather um, and thus hopefully mitigate some of those risks that we face. Food science and research plays an increasingly significant role in our response to events in our environment as food production, as food production and food supply remains critical for New Zealand. While recovering from threats to New Zealand's supply chain, foodborne illness also remains a significant challenge around the world in terms of health and economic impacts. In New Zealand, we are fortunate enough to trust that the majority of food we buy is safe and suitable to eat. However, there is the constant need to remain vigilant with regard to food safety risks and to ensure that we're able to manage them, whether that be at a food production site, a restaurant, or in the home. Our food and fibre sector is backed by a truly world-class food safety system with strong regulatory and industry investment in food safety, particularly across our major export foods. The Ministry for Primary Industries and New Zealand Food Safety have a key role to play in providing this robust regulatory framework which is recognised internationally. They are crucial to providing assurances that New Zealand's food is known and trusted by our trading partners. Our strong food safety system must effectively protect consumers from risks and hazards associated with food production, processing, sale and consumption. The system focuses on protecting and promoting our reputation and market position as being a safe food producing na nation with high food safety and animal welfare standards creating quality premium products here and overseas. And as a farmer who has been to many conferences around the world and spoken to people in various places, the main thing they always tell me about New Zealand food, the reputation of safety is paramount in a lot of those decisions. From a food safety perspective, New Zealand Food Safety monitors and assesses New Zealand's systems and processes. For dairy monitoring, for example, milk integrity, chemical residues and contaminants are monitored, as well as the conformance of our milk to various international and market standards. Identifying emerging risks in New Zealand's unique context is critical. New Zealand Food Safety scans for emerging hazards, issues of international concern and what issues might arise in the future if we don't act today. An example of identifying and managing emerging risks in our unique context are the changes in highly pathogenic avian influenza virus. I get to cover this from both angles, biosecurity and food safety. And New Zealand Food Safety is monitoring the global spread and has carried out risk assessments for industries to understand food safety or risks associated with the virus HPI, HPAI infection in humans is rare and is generally associated with direct contact with infected birds and in recent cases in the United States cattle. Current risk management plans are in place to prevent sick animals intended for processing from entering the supply chain. New Zealand Food Safety and Biosecurity New Zealand are working on alongside the Department of Conservation to monitor the HPAI situation and should the risk level change, there are plans in place to mitigate those risks. Together, the New Zealand Food Safety and the Centre are tackling Campylobacter and Salmonella in chicken meat. Vibrio in raw or undercooked seafood and shellfish, Yersenia in pork products, Hepatitis A in imported frozen berries, and potentially life-threatening Listeria monocytogenis. I think I got that right. Did I? Yep, I got it. Cool. Uh, and chilled, ready to eat foods with long shelf lives. New Zealand Food Safety has lifted the governance of the Campylobacter program, establishing more dedicated project resources 
extending the science to the liver control measures that are rapidly and pragmatically implementable, and seeking intermediate measures of success. The Campylobacter campaign successfully achieved its 2020 target of reducing human cases by 10%, from 88.4 to 79.6 cases per 100,000 people. I am sure we will all work together to achieve a new target of a further reduction of 20% by the end of 2024. In closing, we all have a key role to play in making sure our food safety system works and maintaining that high level of global trust for the collective benefit of all New Zealanders. Thank you for your continued work with New Zealand food safety and industry across the meat, seafood, poultry, horticulture and dairy sectors. I acknowledge the hard work, dedication and contributions from ev of everyone in this room for what you do for the food safety in New Zealand, for our five million strong consumers here in New Zealand and the millions of global consumers who trust and believe in the New Zealand food story. While each of us plays our own part in this work, there are considerable benefits to be achieved by all of us sharing our respective food safety, science and research knowledge and working together on challenges that we all face. And this is a key job I see of the centre. I hope the information shared from the other speakers here today will help New Zealand Food Safety and the centre continue with their significant contribution to helping the New Zealand food system thrive. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your conference and if anyone spots problems, I'm only an email away, I do have the power to fix things these days. So I look forward to hearing from anyone who wants to provide me with any advice or thoughts, more than welcome to listen. So thank you all and hope you have a great day. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you Minister. Gee whiz, those campy numbers are good aren't they? They used to be, uh, I remember back in the 90s we were uh, world champions at camp getting campylobacteriosis here in New Zealand. Uh, well, well into the 300s I think, for, particularly during during the springtime and, and late summer. So that's that's a great target and some, you know, some great words there from perhaps, you know, the biggest star in, in the food safety galaxy that is the Minister. Thank you Minister. Speaking of stars, uh, my job now is to introduce uh, Mr Vince Arbuckle. Vince joined the Ministry for Primary Industries in November 2018 and currently leads uh, New Zealand Food Safety. Prior to this, he was Deputy Director General Compliance and Governance and held senior roles in Corrections, the New Zealand Fire Service and AXA New Zealand. So Vince will be coming to outline current priorities with food safety at MPI. Thank you, Vince. Uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa, uh, ko Vince Arbuckle, toko ingoa. Um, good morning. Um, <coughs> delighted to uh, follow my boss this morning, uh, the Minister for Food Safety, uh, uh, Minister Hoggard. Um, I'm a simple public servant. Uh, I'm not a food safety expert. So I look at s sort of organisations and systems uh, from an accountability and design perspective. Um, I've had, uh, I've been in the role three years, and in that time I've had four ministers for food safety. Um, one of my sort of jobs, which I sort of most terrifies me, is I'm the person that gets to call the minister when something really bad happens. So. Um, we have this sort of a line when the new minister starts, uh, we sort of work out it's small, um, you know, the comms people, someone will call your office, talk to your, you know, your Rebecca's or your press secretaries or somebody. Uh, if it's a really big thing, I'll call you. So when he gets a, when he gets, sees my uh, my number on his phone, he normally answers it. So uh, in the course of three years, I have had a number of occasions when I've had to ring uh, ministers and you know, and explain we've got this thing going. Uh, fortunately, touch wood, none of those issues have been anywhere near as significant as what we had 
just over 10 years ago uh, in New Zealand. But we have had and we continue to have uh, either issues that, that uh, resolve themselves uh, or are near misses. Uh, but what I've learnt in the course of those three years is how quickly the system responds to those sort of issues. <clears throat> Within hours, uh, we're also talking to the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. Within hours, the Minister for Food Safety or the Minister for Agriculture or Trade is briefing the Prime Minister. There's not too many countries in the world where you get that level of escalation on a food safety issue. And, and why is that? It's because our reputation and our prosperity is dependent on it. There's not many countries in the world that are like that. Um, I was in Australia last week, the week before, uh, with a, a Fazan's, uh, the Trans-Tasman Food System uh, a stakeholder meeting. If you compare Australia with New Zealand, Australia, the lucky country, is still able to dig, up, dig itself up and export it to China. So if you look at what the Australian economy is, it's still largely dependent on minerals and, and resources. You look at the New Zealand economy, it is so dependent on its primary industries. Of those, the vast majority are food and beverage. So our prosperity, our public services, pretty much our lifestyle is dependent on, on that steady stream. You know, if you go to the any port in New Zealand, airport or port, those containers that you see loaded up, 80% of those containers are filled with our primary products, the majority of which are food and, food and beverage. Uh, that's a unique position. There aren't many developed countries in the world which have such dependence on its primary sector. So it's not surprising that we have a Minister for Food Safety. There are not many countries that actually have such a thing. You know, often they're folded into drug and, drug and food systems. You often don't see that as a phenomena. That's a unique New Zealand thing. Um, you get a whole structure such as a New Zealand food safety, whole investment in an infrastructure which is really unique globally. Um, so apart from the person that makes those phone calls, <laughs> I'm the person that also constantly worries about, are we doing enough, you know? And in the absence of a major crisis, and therefore all those reviews that happen, you, cru you can cruise along. You can start to question, are we making too much of an investment? Could we trim things back? So we continue Fortunately, touch wood, over 10 years, the New Zealand has not had a major reputational level issue with food safety. That's a combination of good management, new systems introduced post WPC at all sorts of levels within companies, as the regulator, between science and research, um, but it's also a measure and part of good luck. So it, the two cannot be separated uh, out. Um, when I look at today, I'm sort of encouraged by the breadth of expertise that New Zealand has. You know, we've got some unique things. We've got a new, unique thing in the research centre. We've got a unique collaboration with Massey University, which is such an important thing. Many other countries in the world would have nothing like the level of collaboration that New Zealand has. The fact that we bring regularly our experts together in a forum like this is totally unique and totally valuable. So I'm encouraged by that. I keep worrying and keep thinking, are we doing enough? Which I think is probably my sort of closing comment is to ask each of you to think the same thing. Are we doing enough? because it's very easy to rest on your laurels uh, and think, well, no incidents equates to perfect system. It doesn't necessarily so, especially when the risk shifts shifting, the, the food production systems are shifting, the way consumers uh, interact with food is changing. It's not as if it's a static system, it's constantly uh, change, changing. So that would be my, 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 my comment. We're in the middle of 
looking at our strategy at the present. Um, traditionally, we've had two legs to the strategy. It's been safe and suitable food, which is a sort of statutory function for, uh, for us, and then a thriving food system, a thriving food businesses. We're looking at establishing a third leg in the new strategy, which is a well-functioning food safety system, which thinks about all the players in the food safety system. When you think about it, there's co-regulators, there's territorial authorities, there's verifiers, there's AQ, there's a science community, there's businesses, there's competence within businesses, academics, there is, uh, there's a huge infrastructure that supports food safety in New Zealand. And how does that work and how does that function? Protecting that, growing that, that is probably going to be our third leg of our new strategy. So I just want to close and say thank you so much for what you do. You, you know, like the thin blue line, <laughs> you know, you're keeping us all safe uh, every day. And so thank you uh, for all that you do. Thank you. That's fantastic. Love that, especially the part about Australia digging its way to economic freedom. I've seen lots of prison movies about people digging their way to freedom, but um, if Kim Hill was here, she'd be, don't mention Australians and prisoners. Um, so yeah, no, that's terrific. Vince, thanks very much for giving us that sense of where things are headed in that, and, and yeah, some great comments there. So onwards, uh, the first plenary session. <laughs>